Do you need an expensive sewing machine? That's the question we're answering. Hey everybody, I'm Jennifer Moore here with The Sewing Report, helping you discover your love of sewing. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in this edition, we're going to be talking about sewing machines. Do you need a fancy one? Will an entry-level one do? That's what we're going to be getting into. I'm going to be sharing my opinions on the sewing machines I've used over the years. And this question was actually posed by a friend of mine who was interested in sewing but was wondering, do you need a $6,000 machine or will a $200 machine do? And I'm here to answer that question. In my opinion, I think it depends on what you're sewing, what kind of projects you're doing, and how advanced of a sewist you actually are. So let me get into my history with sewing machines. I started out sewing at the end of 2012 by buying a sewing machine, a vintage Singer 2012 off of eBay. Now this is a great machine, doesn't have a lot of modern features obviously, but it's a workhorse and I really feel like the quality of these vintage machines are excellent. But as far as everyday sewing goes, they can be a little bit frustrating. I was afraid to break it, it is an antique, so I was a little intimidated by it. So then we ended up buying a Brother SE400. It's a sewing and embroidery machine, and I really like that machine. We ended up eventually giving it to my mother-in-law, but for several years we never had any issues with it. We got it off of Amazon, and we didn't ever have to get it serviced or anything like that. So we pretty much just used and abused it, cleaned out the bobbin case every once in a while, and it was totally fine. So I think for a beginner starting out, just getting a machine off you know, off Amazon or some sort of other website. I think it's a great start. You can see if you like it without having to invest tons of cash into this hobby, especially if you don't know if you're gonna be continuing it or not. So then, about a year later, I ended up upgrading again. I got a Janome 7700. It's mostly a quilting machine, and I have found I really like Janome machines, but here's the caveat. I paid about $2,500 for my machine at a dealer. At the time it was a decent price and it came with three years of servicing, but what I found about myself is that this dealership is on the other side of town and I hate driving around Atlanta. So whenever the time came to service it, which is actually coming up about now, I really didn't want to go. One thing that does frustrate me about the sewing machine buying process is that a lot of these sewing machine dealers are still requiring you to go physically to the store. The prices aren't super transparent and a lot of 21st century customers, younger customers, don't really want to do that. Time is our biggest asset. It's super important to us and that's why we want a buying process that we can do from the comfort of our own home and I wish more sewing machine manufacturers were in touch with that fact. So that's just my opinion on this, you know, feel free to leave me a comment on that because I do think it's an interesting discussion to have, but let's get back to the machines. So after I ended up buying the Janome 7700, it's a great machine, but I did have some buyer remorse. I almost think for me it's too much machine. The things I sew are like little home deck projects, quilts, clothing, and other smaller items. I'm not a professional seamstress. But I did, the main reason I picked that machine was because it had an 11 inch throat space. But after I bought my machine, then Janome came out with the Skyline series, and that machine has a very similar throat space, but the price is a lot lower. You can get a Janome Skyline for like $1,000 to $1,200. And if that had been an option when I was looking for a sewing machine, I probably would have gone for the Skyline instead. So I've had that machine for a few years. It works great and I do really enjoy it, but I again, I think it's a little more machine than I needed at a price that was a little bit higher. So then I ended up getting a Sailrite machine and I'll link it below. And I'm gonna be very, very honest. I have not used it. I tried, I spent a few hours trying to look at the instructions and try to see if I could work with it. It's a little bit finicky and it's not it's not as easy to use as the Janome. So it's just been sitting in the craft room and I haven't done anything with it. It was a rather expensive machine and I am having some regrets about that. I also have a brother serger. I've taken a lot of uh, classes and workshops at sewing events and I did take a serger workshop. 
The, cl the model we used in the surgery workshop was this $6,000 baby lock, and I was told by a number of people that baby lock are like the gold standard for sergers. My $200 brother I think works just fine for my purposes. I don't make a lot of clothing and I don't sew professionally, so for my own personal home needs I find that this $200 serger works just great. In fact, I'm interested in getting the brother cover lock machine that's sort of like the equivalent that's about three to four hundred dollars, so I'm kind of waiting until it goes on sale on Amazon. Maybe I'll pick it up then. So that brings me to my latest sewing machine acquisition, which is the Epperson Sparrow 25. When I was at QuiltCon last year, I ended up talking to Philip Ulci, which is the son of the owner of Bernina, Bernina Sewing Machines, which is pretty much like the Rolls Royce of sewing machines, and he was coming out with a new line of more budget-friendly, entry-level machines. It's a line called Eversone. They're, I would th say they're similar to Bernina's in design and in make, but again, the features and the price is just a lot, lot lower than the Bernina machines. These machines range from like $130 to $330, which I think is fantastic. For someone who is just getting into sewing, you don't know if you want to spend two or three thousand dollars on a machine or more. So I really think that that machine, that line of machines is a great option. And in fact, I actually contacted him and I asked if I could try out the Eversone and make some videos about it. He gave me the thumbs up. So that is the machine you see right here. And I've been using it for a few months just to see how it would compare to the Junomi. And I will say I've been gravitating more towards using the Eversone than my $2,500 Janome. There are some little differences. Obviously, the throat space of the Eversone is smaller, but I've been using it for pretty much all of my sewing projects lately, and as far as the stitch quality goes and the ease of use, I've not really seen much of a difference between the Janome 7700 and the Eversone Sparrow 25. And in fact, the only difference is I have noticed the Janome runs like a little bit the sewing motion of the Janome seems a little bit smoother, but it's definitely not a $2,000 difference. So I think if you're in the market for a pretty good workhorse everyday sewing machine, I really think the Eversone Sparrow 25 is a great option. And the reason why I was especially excited about it is that it's allowed to be sold online. Bernina's aren't really sold online as far as the higher end models, but I love that the company realizes that their target demographic is probably doing a lot of online shopping, so I really appreciate about that about the company, and that is more specifically why I wanted to see if I could work with Eversone to try to educate people on what a great machine it is and how affordable it is, because I think it's really great. The model that I have, it has a lot of computerized functions. It's got the thread cutter, it's got needle up and down, and I've tried using the letter, the letter stitches, and I really like it. I think they, the letters are very, very, very nicely designed and they look like monograms. You can't make them super big, but for doing smaller items or putting someone's name on it, I think it's a really great feature to have in a $330 machine. So after all that, my consensus is that for the average sewist who maybe makes a few things a month and doesn't do anything like you're not long arm, you don't need to long arm quilt things or you don't do a lot of heavy embroidery, I really don't feel the need for you to drop two or three thousand dollars on a sewing machine. I think a three hundred dollar sewing machine is great, but from my experience, I think if you can have machines that do different things, that's actually more beneficial. I love having a serger. I love having a machine that can has a large throat space to do quilting, and I actually really like the Everson Sparrow 25, and I'm really interested in getting that cover stitch machine. So I think that. I'd rather have several cheaper machines that can do different things than have one super expensive machine that really only does one thing. So that's my two cents. Um, feel free to share your thoughts below. I know there's probably going to be a lot of different opinions. And thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, and for everyone that enjoyed the huge cutty mat review, thank you for all the positive feedback. We really enjoyed making this and every once in a while we're going to have more of a uh, humorous video just to shake things up and mix things up. So hopefully you stay with us for that. James really enjoyed being a guest on Sewing Report and he might actually hijack the channel more often. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.
Ba 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 ba. This is how people take real selfies.